So we have a few more awards to be presented. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to yet another moment of great significance in our agenda as we officially felicitate excellence in service within the maritime sector. This award is presented by the Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Aviation, and it's a prestigious recognition bestowed upon two individuals today as a testament to their exemplary dedication to the seafaring industry. Now, we'd also like to make mention that we do have three other categories that are currently being evaluated for recognition of other seafarers, and those recipients of the awards will be notified in due course. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, to now read out the citations of the two award recipients this morning, may I invite on stage Ms. Harshani Sirinama, Director of Development, Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Aviation. We warmly welcome you, ma'am, to do the honors of telling the audience about our two worthy award recipients. In recognition of the contribution of the seafaring industry, Captain Ajit Peris. Captain Ajit Peris started his seafaring career 50 years back in 1974 as an officer cadet with Ceylon Shipping Corporation and served on board an Indian state training ship Rajendra on a scholarship from CSC. He sailed with CSC in all ranks, ranging from cadet to ship captain before joining a German shipping company. He was appointed captain of a foreign going class one ship at age of 28. He embarked ashore to join Sea Line Shipping as MD and Chairman and transformed it into the most diversified shipping company, the Sea Line Group of Companies. He is founder of Sinek Maritime Campus, the largest maritime training institute in Sri Lanka, which has produced over 300 captains, over 200 chief engineers, over 1,400 management level officers, over 1,700 operation, operational level officers and nearly 11,000 ratings. Under his leadership, the maritime training exp expertise was taken overseas to manage the state-owned training academies in both Fiji and the Seychelles. Captain Ajit Piris has traveled extensively overseas to build close relationships with shipping principles to create new employment opportunities for seafarers. These efforts have resulted in the crew pool managed by Sea Line Shipping to reach over 5,000 seafarers, which is a significant percentage of the total active crew pool of Sri Lanka. During the COVID pandemic, he played a key role in establishing the protocol to facilitate seafarer repatriation to ease the dire situation the entire world and trade was facing at the time. Seafarers of all nationalities were treated with the respect and dignity for seafarers to continue to provide their vital services to keep the world economy moving. He was also instrumental in introducing the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transportation professional training courses to Sri Lanka with the focus to upskill the professionals in the logistics sector, which is directly linked to the shipping industry. He was instrumental in setting up professional bodies, including Nautical Institute, Association of Seafarer Recruiting Agents, Association of Lanka Maritime Training Institutes. He has served as president of the company of master mariners, chairman of Ceylon Association of Ships Agents, and has been a member of the committee appointed by His Excellency, the President of Maritime Affairs, 2009-2019. He has also served in the following key positions. Member for advisory board appointed by the Minister of Ports and Shipping, 
member for Select Committee on Maritime Affairs of Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, member for Advisory Committee of CASA. He is attached to the following professional bodies as Fellow to the Nautical Institute, UK, Fellow Chartered Institute of Logistic and Transport, UK, Fellow Certified Professional Manager. Currently, he serves as Executive Chairman, Ceylon Group of Companies, Chairman and President, Cinec Campus, and is the Chairman, ASTRA, Chairman of the Advisory Committee on Education Services, appointed by the Minister of Trade. At this inaugural National Seafarers Day, Captain Ajit Piris is felicitated for his exemplary service to the entire maritime industry. As we now invite the award recipient to join us up, we'd also like to invite Honorable Douglas Devananda, Minister of Fisheries, Honorable Dr. Suren Raghavan, State Minister of Education, Mr. K.D.S. Ruan Chandra, Secretary to the Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Aviation, to please join the presentation party as we honor our deserving award recipient. Ladies and gentlemen, our first award recipient this morning, Captain Ajit Pires. We warmly welcome him to join us up. Let's put our hands together, ladies and gentlemen, as we recognize Captain Ajit Pires' exemplary service to the seafaring industry. We warmly welcome our dignitaries now to do the honors of presenting this wonderful recognition to Captain Ajit Pires. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, can we please hear a resounding round of applause for Captain Ajit Pires. Thank you, sir, for your extraordinary service at sea. We say thank you very much to Honorable Dr. Suren Raghavan for sharing his thoughts with us. We would now like to invite our Honorable State Minister back on stage because we have a very important milestone that we would like you to witness. So, sir, if you could please join us back. We'd also like Captain Ajit Pires, the president of Sinek Campus, to please accompany our Honorable State Minister of Education on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, we are thrilled to announce today a momentous achievement that marks a historical landmark for seafarers in Sri Lanka. For the first time ever, the Ministry of Education has approved a degree program specifically designed for seafarers. We are delighted to announce that this prestigious degree awarding status for the program has been granted to Sinek Campus, making it the only institute in Sri Lanka capable of offering this degree. So to commemorate this milestone, we now invite the State Minister of Education, Honorable Dr. Suren Raghavan, to formally hand over the Gazette notification to Captain Ajit Piris, the President of Sinek Campus, symbolizing the official recognition of this degree program. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together. This is the official declaration of the degree program specifically designed for seafarers, a first in Sri Lanka. With that, we say thank you very much to our State Minister of Education for joining us. Thank you, sir. Up next... I do hope Captain Ajit Pires is ready to join us because he will be addressing the gathering. And today, Captain Ajit Pires will speak to us on a topic of great importance, and that is seafarers training and education, the historical landmarks and shipping industry perspectives. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for the president of Sinek Campus, Captain Ajit Pires. Good morning, Honorable Primal Siripal de Silva, the Minister for Ports, Shipping and Aviation, Secretary, Ports, Shipping and Aviation, Mr. Ruan Chandra, and rest of the government officials, the command of the Navy. Excellencies representing foreign missions, distinguished invitees, my dear seafarers, and my dear students. It's my 
great pleasure to address you this morning at an event of very significant importance in this country that is declaring and celebrating the National Seafarers Day. I would like to thank the Honorable Minister and the Secretary and the Ministry for giving this recognition to all the seafarers of Sri Lanka by declaring a National Day, National Seafarers Day. My topic is historical landmarks of uh, education and training seafaring in Sri Lanka. But before that, I would like to inform you in general the scenario with regard to seafarers and connected education and training for seafarers. Who is a seafarer? In short, seafarer is a person who works on a ship. And what sort of importance a seafarer plays in the world economy and for in Sri Lanka's context? Have we given enough recognition to the seafarers, not only in Sri Lanka? Today, of course, I'm very happy some recognition is given, but in the world, have we given the due recognition for seafarers? The importance of seafarers to get the world economy ticking is not measured or not recognized by any other countries or the government. The world economy is directly connected to the world trade. And the world trade means trading of goods between countries. And 80% of the those goods trading between countries are carried by ships and the ships are manned and safely navigated and safely delivered the goods by none other than seafarers. So you see the seafarers direct connect, connection to the world economy. Have any of those government personnel or countries, have they given that due recognition to seafarers? I think no. I think they have been playing a very silent role even during the COVID time, even during the economic crisis we had, we were waiting for the ships to come in and who brought those ships? The seafarers. And who ran those ships during the COVID time to keep the people alive and keep, uh, keep going? Seafarers. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to emphasize the fact that seafarers play a major role in our life and also in the world to keep the world economy ticking. There are approximately 1.6 million seafarers in the world. And how much we have? As DG said, actively only 16,000. We have a population of 22 million. And we are a island nation. We have the sea right round. But have you exploited, have you made use of that scenario? Unfortunately, no. The world population today stands at over 8 billion. And the decade that I was born in 1950s, it was only 2.5 billion. You see the growth. And with the population growth, the demand for producing goods to keep the people going have increased. With that increase, the trade, world trade has increased. With the world trade increasing, number of ships required to transport those goods have increased. And the sizes of the ships, the speed of the ships, the types of the ships, they all have evolved and increased. So with that, 
the people who are manning those ships, maneuvering those ships safely to the destinations and discharging and loading cargo safely, their knowledge also have to be enhanced. At the very beginning, the ships were built, the wooden, we had wooden ships. And it was all manpower. People were rowing, using oars to go from place to place. With the technology coming up, developing, then we came sails, using the wind to steer. Then came the mechanical propulsion. Initially, it was steam which really propelled the ship. Then it became fuel. Then it became gas. Now it has become electric. So with the awareness of the environment protection, I think the technology also evolved. And also the type of ships, the sizes of the ship, everything has increased. So in order to man those ships safely, we need all the seafarers to be properly educated. In order to have a safe waters, so safely navigate, because if each country, they decide to have their own rules and regulation, we'll have a problem out at sea in the international waters. So the International Maritime Organization intervened and introduced a minimum standard of training and education to all the seafarers flying in the international waters. This is for ensuring a safe passage of all the people who are sailing on ships. So with the, this background, I will now come into the Sri Lankan scenario. Sri, like the speakers mentioned earlier, Sri Lanka also has a maritime history. Our history reveals that during the time of our kings ruling the country, we had ships transporting goods to neighboring countries. I think the minister mentioned we not only raided, but also he was mentioning that we invaded part of India. All this time I was aware that nations like British, Portugal, Spain, French, those are the people who invaded countries. For the first time, I heard sir, that Sri Lankan also have invaded part of India. So that's the history we have. But since then, what has happened up to late 1960s? Basically, no maritime industry or our maritime industry has not evolved or not improved. I think uh, during the 1960s, there were lots of ships which came to the port of Colombo. Those are Greek ships and Maldivian ships. If somebody was interested in joining a ship, I think through their personal contacts, they were joining those ships. So that was how the seafaring happened in Sri Lanka prior to 1970. Then also there was a like a slot of, for three Sri Lankans to be trained on the Indian training ship called training ship Dufferin. Later on, it was called Rajendra, where I also had the privilege of being trained there on a scholarship by the Ceylon Shipping Corporation. So that was the only places av available until the birth of Ceylon Shipping Corporation in 1970. So with the incorporation and birth of Ceylon Shipping Corporation, the, the seafaring became a little more popular among the Sri Lankans. Earlier, I think very few people in the coastal area, or I should say people who are not Buddhist, who are on other religions, were inclined to join a ship but we had a cultural barrier, thinking the people who join ships 
are not really disciplined and they have their own fun when they go out to other places and things like that. So there was a cultural barrier for people to join ships. But since the birth of Ceylon Shipping Corporation, we have changed that and we have proven that seafarers are much more cultured and disciplined than some of the people we see on TV, not being disciplined, who have been coming out of top class universities in Sri Lanka. So that is the culture we had since the birth of uh, Ceylon Shipping Corporation. A proper training programs were introduced. For the first time in the history of Sri Lanka, the seaman training was conducted in Trincomalee at the Naval Academy uh, with the initiative of the Minister of Shipping and Ceylon Shipping Corporation. Then for the first time in the history of Sri Lanka, the officer and engineer training was conducted at the Morukwa University through a National Diploma Technologies uh, Technical Scheme, NDT scheme. Unfortunately, uh, both training programs at that time was not in line with the international demand. So, but we had the comfort zone because we had ships owned by Ceylon Shipping Corporation. During the peak time, the Ceylon Shipping Corporation had 17 ships. And I was, like mentioned in my presentation, I had the privilege of sailing Ceylon Shipping Corporation right from cadet right up to the ship captain. So it was a nice company to sail and it was a training ground for most of us at that time. But unfortunately, Due to various reasons, the Launch Shipping Corporation has only two ships, and I'm happy that when they built the two ships, they created 52 slots for training. It's marvelous. So then the private sector got involved in training, and the first time uh, the private institute which uh, got involved in seaman training was Mercantile Siemens Training Institute, MSTI. Today it is known as MSTI Maritime Academy. And for the first time, a private institute got involved in the officer and engineer in training was SINEC, which was in 1990. Since then, there were a lot of milestones that had taken place. It's all done by SINEC campus. First COC, class one, Maritime degree program approved by the UGC. First training of female cadets, again by CINEC. International simulator programs, also by CINEC. The latest IGF training program, also by CINEC. And the first shipping book in Sri Lanka for school children, also produced by CINEC, with author being the Dr. Dalit Edrisingha. And also, we have taken the initiative to introduce commercial shipping and maritime science as a subject in the GC O-level curriculum, also by CINEC. So I think we have done, I am not bragging myself, not blowing my own trumpet, but the thing is, this is a reality, this is what we have done. And I would like everyone to know the role that we play. So with our initiative, I think uh, we also embarked on a project uh, which, was, which got the cabinet approval to bring 16,000 active seafarers to 50,000 seafarers by year 2030. I think for that, I think we need all the support of the excellencies who are here and also the, the presidents of the maritime universities who are here from China and Korea to support us to get, like the minister said, all those uh, births for our training to their contacts, to their Korean ship owners and Chinese ship owners to promote uh, Sri Lankans on those sh ships. So uh, that is the task we have and I would like all the people in the maritime industry to rally around and do this as an industry to bring our economy 
place where we all can be very comfortable. Presently, we bring $500 million per annum by purely by wages of seafarers. So we want to make it $1.5 billion in four to five years' time, which is a substantial amount, which will also, I think, help our economy. Like uh, the minister said, yes, we can you know, contribute and make it more, and then, of course, try to target maybe five to six billion in years' time. I think the atmosphere and the conditions are good for that because all the developed countries, uh, including China, Korea, Japan, all those people, people from those countries are not willing to get out to sea. So those are, the, the, the doors are open for us for the people like uh, from Sri Lanka to join those ships. So I think we have to take the maximum advantage with the support of, and, uh, of the government and with the private-public uh, partnership. So with those few words, I would like to uh, thank uh, the ministry for organizing this event and giving the due recognition for the seafarers and also, on a personal note, so thank you very much for recognizing me and giving me uh, the trophy. I am honored, and I will humbly accept it. That will also make me make me more encouraged to do more in the seafaring community in Sri Lanka. With those few words, I would like to wind up my speech, wishing you all the very best and a good day. Thank you.